Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a brand new Falcon and Winter Soldier breakdown and my review thoughts and all that good stuff for episode four. Now, what an ending to that episode. What a way to kind of taint Captain America's legacy. And it kind of went with what, with what I've been talking about in the past few reviews and how I've been saying, and I'm sure you guys have been thinking along this line as well, in terms of US Agent coming to fruition with the serum. And I was wondering, was he going to actually get hold of it? And, and with his desperation to obviously prove himself. And this episode really packed layers upon layers on, on different kind of aspects for different characters. Characters, whether that's more justification for John Walker, like, I, I, as much as we all don't like him, I do see moments where it's like, I get what he's kind of trying to do, as annoying as he is. Moving on to Flag Smashers, uh, obviously political commentary there with the GRC and, and how all of that really ties in. You've got a lot more motivations from Carly this episode. So let's get into the breakdown. Let's talk about all the details. There's so much, so much. And what a way to start this episode as well. I was so captivated by Sebastian Stan's performance. Obviously, the end of last episode, we had Io meet with the White Wolf. Uh, obviously, they are not too happy that they have learned that their own little White Wolf has kind of sprung the very man who was responsible for killing their king. So it's, it's very hard for her to understand why he would be doing this, especially with how in the beginning of this episode, she basically helped him become free of the Winter Soldier programming. And that was such a, an interesting scene. We see her say the words that usually trigger the programming and Bucky is really struggling to believe it, saying this won't work. And, and as it's kind of unfolding, he's like crying, probably out of fear for it activating, but also just as it's unfolding more and more, with each and every word he's having these little flashbacks to the the crimes and the trauma really that he's been through and through what he's done to other people it's it, he's arguably one of if not the most interesting character on this show don't get me wrong i love sam but Jesus, Louise's Papa Jesus. It was just an incredible performance and a really cool uh, flashback to his time in Wakanda. Now, Bucky does explain to Io that he's a means to an end because he's helpful with what they're trying to prevent. She is understanding to an extent, obviously, by giving him eight hours. This is where the characters learn about the GRC bombing from last week's episode. They're now even putting out the message that more attacks will be issued if, if their demands aren't met in full. Yet, despite all of this and despite people dying, for example, they I, I really appreciate the Flag Smashers point of view where they heard the news that in the bombing this guy died who had only been working there and fought the GRC for a week and he had two kids. So it's just like it's, it's very radical. It really is despite her motivations at the core and what we see from her and her people and how more people of the world are rallying to the Flag Smashers cause. It, and, and Sam himself in this episode, as much as he agrees with her fight, it, the execution is isn't it. And I like how they tied the super serum into the conviction of her mission or just in general how the super serum can just, uh, I guess, kind of emphasize the, what, what you're really about. This is obviously what drives Baron Zemo so much because he believes that it's just going to lead to a very, very supremacist kind of world if you have super soldiers running around. And I, th I think Carly is a shining example for him, despite the good that Sam sees in her as well. So I like seeing all these different avenues as well. I did appreciate how Bucky pointed out something that made Baron Zemo go touche and how the serum never corrupted Steve. But then Baron Zemo was like, but there's never been another Steve Rogers, has there? That but it's like, what, what, what about Isaiah? Poor Isaiah. Is everyone forgetting about Isaiah? But not only that, Bucky, in a way, I know he was the Winter Soldier, but like he was brainwashed to do that. And ever since then, he's super soldiered up. He's a good guy. If any flaws or kind of troubles that he's experiencing in present day, that's just as a result of his trauma. So I argue that Bucky and Isaiah are kind of uh, alternative Steve Rogers in terms of how... Steve wasn't impacted by the serum in the way that Baron Zemo says it does put a magnifying glass on those characteristics of the person if they take it. And I argue that Bucky and Isaiah aren't getting enough credit there. The next lead that the gang was chasing was to find more out about Donya Madani at the kind of Flag Smashers place of operations in a way. So he couldn't really get answers out of anyone. And whereas Baron Zemo could through giving candy to the kids to find out where the funeral was taking place. And it, it, yeah. In this moment as well, Zemo tells the kids that Sam and Bucky are very bad and to keep Donya's funeral secret. And to be fair, if you were Baron Zemo, you'd probably do the same thing. Like if he knows <laughs> where they need to go and he tells that to Sam and Bucky, then they're, they're just gonna give him to Wakandan straight up. So he he needs that for leverage. This leads to more exploration into the, the snap and the five years 
with what people experience in humanity in general in the world. And I really do appreciate these insights because as much as we do kind of understand the baseline of what happened, I feel like it's really important to kind of focus in on those five years sometimes because obviously one of the biggest antagonists in this series is the Flag Smashers group and they're doing very radical, dangerous things all for the cause of what the world used to be and about bringing that back. And as much as we can poke holes in that, there is, as Sam slash Falcon identified himself, some sense to the fight because quite literally, when you have billions of people snap away like that, the entire world kind of comes together. Also, in their Thanos kind of logic level way, there's plenty more resources versus that of when people came back. Donya Madani, who helped raise Kali and give her love, clothed her and whatnot, died of tuberculosis, gonna get treatment. There's more jobs when all of those billions of people disappeared. As Kali said later on in the episode as well, they were kicked out of places where people lived. I'm guessing that is down to people just coming back and wanting to take back that. It's just such a mess. But I still, I don't know why I'm trying to rationalize this. I've said this before. Can't understand why, why they're not more sympathetic to billions of people coming back. It wasn't their choice being snapped. So when they come back, how are you meant to deal with a situation like that? But I do agree, for example, with that moment with the teacher talking about that they would send more resources and teachers, and that was six months ago. You shouldn't make false promises like that. So it is a very messy situation where there's understanding on both sides. But where you really start to lose people and characters like Sam is, is when you start killing people, like as we saw with the father who had two kids and had only been working for the GRC for only a week. Now let's talk about Sharon Carter for a second because we had very brief scenes of her in this episode that I do feel like is very plot convenient wise at the moment when we first see her she's walking through and we see these like armed guards and she's just nodding at them so she knows them and there's definitely more to her as I've been pointing out than what she's let across to Sam I think I mean she has said that she's got connected I suppose so I hope they just don't leave it there but there is it does feel like there's a lot more to them because if you have nothing and fair enough, you, you're going to Madripoor and, and cause you're on, you're technically a fugitive. But imagine if you start from nothing and then you elevate yourself up to the point of where you have access to a satellite or two, as she said herself. And that is extreme power. Now, lots of theories are going around. I remember this in my last week's review and it did make me think for a split second, like, eh, but no, the theories of her being the power broker, I, I, I really don't think so. I mean, I'll eat my words if I'm wrong, I'll hold my hands up, but like, it, it just wouldn't, it doesn't make sense to me. Albeit, I do think that she could be in connection to him or maybe knows more about him than what she's laying on. She mentions to Sam that the power broker went apeshit, obviously, as well, when he found out that Wilfred Nagel died because he wants the serum, obviously, and the golden goose who recreated the serum with his own improvements is now dead. And, and I feel like, yes, he's the background big bad, and we got that text later on, but it's like, kind of want to see something from him now. We've only got a couple of episodes left, and if you bring him in pretty late, is it really going to be that impressive? I guess it depends on who it is and there's lots of theories out there of people thinking there's going to be a big kind of cameo in relation to him and some other aspects so I really hope so but I hope that they do give a bit more shady explanation to Sharon Carter as well just because if they don't and they just put it down to that she's lived in Madripoor starting with nothing but then got to the point of just being connected to multiple satellites just through her grafting throughout the a couple of years or so I, I guess you could get there but it's just a bit convenient so I need to know what she's connected to and if you have any ideas ideas about the something more to her, let me know down in the comments below. As things are ramping up, Carly then makes the decision to make more super soldiers, so she goes to collect the serum. I appreciate amongst these conversations, they kind of, it's like, uh, obviously, the legacy of Captain America with this series. Is it good? Is Walker the right guy? Is Sam really the right guy? But then they kind of put it on to Carly through how the world kind of needs a leader since people are lost. One who understands their pain, though, and that kind of looks like Carly, at least to them. And, that, and well, technically to a lot of people, as more and more people are rallying to her cause. But as she states herself, the shield is like a monument to a bygone era. And interesting enough, that's kind of how Sam came across in a way as well. Like, uh, you could put it down to a lot more of that he didn't feel like he was worthy to take the shield and that he wanted to kind of improve the world in a new way, but in terms of how that was a bygone era and he wanted to put the shield to rest. But yeah, it's interesting to see those parallels between those two characters. But this moment leads us to good old John Walker finding Sam and Bucky. And, and, and from the very get-go of where we see him, he's very amped up. And I, as I said, like, I really do kind of like his character. And don't get me wrong, I don't want him to be Captain America, but I do feel like he is a, still a very interesting character to the point of where you can see where he's coming from in some respects. Like, he's very desperate to prove himself. He's been through a bunch of hell 
in terms of like the medals that he received for his service in Afghanistan. There's motivations there with how he just wants to help out with like Battlestar saying, imagine if we had the serum then, how many people we could have saved. And how he said himself as well, the stuff that they did wasn't exactly something to be awarded for. It, it, it was very dark stuff. And that is like something that is true to military service in the real world today. So he thought that Cap or being Cap would be his chance to do something the right way in a good way. So he wants to prove himself. So I get that. And I feel like as much as he's going about it in quite a desperate, amped up way, I'm still nevertheless very engrossed by Wyatt Russell's performance. I think he's fantastic, especially towards the back half of this episode. And I feel like he's really embodying a US agent to live action really damn well. And, and at least in this unique adaptation approach to it versus the source material. I also like this moment where Walker and Battlestar found Sam, Bucky and Zemo for other reasons as well, because it showed a conflict of interest in how to handle the Kali situation. For example, Walker is like straight up, I want to arrest her. But Sam wants to talk to her alone as he thinks that he can reach her since the closest person to her died and she's vulnerable. And since he used to counsel soldiers with trauma, he thinks he has a real shot. And funnily enough, even uh, Battlestar kind of agrees with him there. Yet you still see that desperation with John wanting to prove himself, do something right. You kind of understand where he's coming from as well because he quite simply puts it that they're way past reasoning with her since she blew up a building with people in it. And you can really see both sides of the fence there, which is why I quite like his character. Don't, not in a likable kind of way, but I do feel like you see only the human sides come out of him as I keep repeating. And I think people aren't giving enough credit to his character aspects like that. I did find this moment with the girl leading them to the funeral quite convenient. It's like, did Zemo text her? Does she have a phone? Because we didn't say, hey, meet me later on uh, at this part of the alleyway. Like, do you know what I mean? It, 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 it called us a nitpick, fair enough, but she was just there. I guess it's one of those plot logic moments in the, uh, it happened in a behind the scenes scene where Zemo said an extra line to her or something like that. But either way, he pays her a lot of money. They get led to the funeral location. And this <laughs> is where a lot of sheet goes down. Walker only gives Sam 10 minutes to talk her down. I, this this is where, you know, you get the annoying side of Walker. Not only that, he was very, very, as I keep saying, amped up. He was breathing very heavily, pumping himself up. He just wanted to go in there, get this done. Yet again, I do understand it. He's really on edge. He's got this responsibility. He just wants to apprehend somebody who, in all respects, if they're killing people, you can see his point of view for wanting to just kind of cuff them, take them in if, if, they, if they can. This is where we had that moment where Sam spoke to Carly, as I mentioned earlier, said that he understands her motivation. I really love that line of envy from Walker as well, saying this must be so easy for you to Bucky. All that serum running through your veins. It's just like he would love, love that opportunity. Once again, very US agent in that moment. And then this leads to great Carly Morgenthau, you are under arrest. This was all very obviously going to go wrong. In this moment, we had Bucky pursuing Carly. Zemo had got out of his handcuffs and Carly walks right in front of him and he shoots her which she, she seemed to handle quite well, I guess, because of the super soldier serum. But that is when also we have the serum on the floor and he starts smashing it all to pieces. He couldn't have had a happier look on his face as well. There was one remaining though, obviously, in how Walker got onto the scene. He picked it up, put it in his pouch. This is his chance in his mind to become the Captain America. Meanwhile, on Carly's end, we had that text that I mentioned earlier with Power Broker saying, you're playing revolutionary on borrowed time, little girl. I want the serum back or I will find you and I will end you. But I don't know, like, I can't help but think so. Like, I, I, I feel like his presence, even though you have kind of multiple antagonists in this season, I, I, I don't feel like that much anticipation for the Power Broker, surprisingly. I don't I would love to know what you think there. I just feel like his setup just being done through text messages feels a little bit underwhelming to me, but maybe the reveal as to who it is in of itself uh, is going to be so cool that it just kind of makes me forget all of that. But thus far, like just teasing, like, I'm going to come after you. Next episode, I'm going to come after you. For that episode after that, I'm, I'm going to come up. It's just like, I don't... I don't care, like, all right. And funnily enough, that's kind of how Carly's been as well. And, and she points out we can't fight a war on two fronts. You know, we've got the power broker people coming after us, as we've seen in previous episodes. And now we've got freaking Cap, we've got Sam, Bucky, and she wanted to separate them. But before that happened, we had quite an important moment for Walker again, which really kicked him into the direction of taking it. And I like how they had him considering taking it as well. He wasn't actually desperate, like, oh, I'm going to straight up inject myself. They did make him hesitate. So in this moment, Walker just kicked 
kicks down the door saying, hand Baron Zemo over. This is when Walker's just like putting the shield down and just wants to have a fist fight. But that is when Io and fellow Wakandans come in. Like, I almost feel secondhand embarrassment for how badly they got whooped. But they very deliberately wanted to do this, obviously, because we had that moment where Walker was just seething and in absolute despair at the same time because it's just like, as he said himself, they weren't even super soldiers. So he just thinks... Wow, I can't even handle people who are human with my abilities and, and it just really eggs him on into the direction of taking the serum. But one thing, I, I, how do you guys feel about Io? Like, she, she literally gets the spear and tries to kill him multiple times. Like, there's this one moment, if the shield wasn't there, he would have got straight up impaled. There's another moment where Bucky literally grabs the spear and prevents him from dying. And there was that funny moment where his arm literally fell off and he had no idea that could happen. And that was pretty hilarious. But yeah, I, I suppose, you know, Wakandans, they, they don't really give much of a f about that i suppose but it just felt weird like you're gonna straight up kill him you could have just knocked him out i don't know i don't know another important thing to note here though is that zemo takes his opportunity to escape with amongst this brawl i i find it hard to believe though if i'm being very honest that the wakandans wouldn't notice him trying to get away he is their priority you wouldn't let your priority somebody who they feel so much shame for letting kill their king escape it's just a hard thing to believe now this is where we're more or less at the end of the episode now carly really really presses sam's buttons because and deliberately so because she threatens more or less his sister he goes to meet with carly suited up with bucky and obviously this was all kind of a diversion at the same time as like she kind of wants to recruit him and doesn't want to kill him or if not that just let her go but this is when they realize that it is a distraction because they wanted to kill the new captain america in a different location because very conveniently as i said i really hope they give more to shout out i'm sure that she's connected to Bar power broker maybe but conveniently just comes in with a satellite saying that Walker has found the Flag Smashers or maybe they have found him. What was a tad confusing? I don't know if that's the right word. I wasn't confused, confused I guess, but I was kind of taken back with how desperate uh, Falcon and Bucky were to go after and save Walker. I don't know if anyone else felt like that just because in this moment it didn't, it wasn't as if Sam knew that Walker had found Carly because they were with Carly. So I, I, I know they don't want them to die technically. It's just I didn't think Sam and Bucky cared that much to just yeet themselves out of there and go help Walker as much as they could. I would, however, understand that a lot more if they knew that Carly was where Walker was, because then they'd be like, oh crap, Walker might try and kill Carly, or Carly, I guess, might kill Walker. I don't know, but either way, we cut to Walker and Battlestar. Battlestar's gun is on the floor, they tie him up, and we have Walker versus the super soldiers. The action in these upcoming moments was just really cool. We had Falcon bursting in, and he sees there's actually a Flag Smasher super soldier that gets sent flying by Walker. And we also see Walker crush that pipe. Falcon's like, what did you do? And this leads to that moment where Walker absolutely snaps. Things get very dark. And I, I praise Marvel for this because this is arguably one of the darkest things I've seen in the MCU in quite a while. I can't really recall a, a moment right now, but this was like the imagery, especially of that final shot, but we'll get onto that. Walker is being restrained by Super Soldier. Fair enough, completely believable. Carly takes that opportunity to try and obviously get him whilst he can't help himself. But this led to Battlestar getting yeeted into a Killer obviously is not a super soldier and he instantly dies upon impact and obviously losing a friend is something that is unfathomable let alone to lose somebody who you served with so I kind of understand with how Walker I, I can't say that I would have done anything different in terms of like just running after them and just seeing blind rage I'm sure anyone despite not liking Walker could sympathize with just wanting to get the person who literally just murdered your brother. Obviously, I, go, I don't condone his actions, but I, I, I did feel bad for him in that moment. So this completely sends him over the edge. He's absolutely relentless in terms of pursuing the Flag Smashers. It doesn't matter what Flag Smasher it is, he's going after the nearest one, and unfortunately it's the, the, the nice Flag Smasher. This led to a very public moment, very public moment, which you could read into as kind of like uh, obviously symbolizing real world brutality and stuff with people recording, police officer doing something to someone and obviously what walker represents like doing things by the book as that's been explored in this season so far they have constraints he's kind of blurred that line but he is still technically operating as like a glorified police officer for the grc to maintain the peace if you know what i mean we have him initially beating down this other guy with the shield as he you know sends it out and retracts it back but then in the very public view as i said 
this guy saying it wasn't me and he completely smashes him in. And as I said, Wyatt Russell, absolutely brilliant performance, especially that moment where he brings up the shield, the camera shot, this moment was beautifully shot. And then you have that like moment with the shield and the, the, the slight aspects of blood on the bottom of it. That was just, um, that was really something. It was very US agent, as I said, it was very, it was just great. What a way to end the episode. We have Sam and Bucky arrive on the scene. People just see that their new Captain America has just brutally murdered someone. That looks incredibly bad, obviously. Just because, you know, the most simplest thing that anyone would be thinking in that moment, why did he do that? Why didn't he just arrest him or something like that, right? As I kind of open this review, I have one thing to say about that. What a way to taint the shield, to taint Captain America's legacy. The interesting thing to theorize about now, and I'd love for you guys to get involved down in the comments, is where are things gonna go from here? Are the government gonna kind of try and like sweep this under the bush kind of thing? Or is kind of Walker gonna be like, it's gonna be very hard to do that. I mean, imagine, I mean, who knows? I really don't know. But what I've kept bringing up every review is when are we gonna see, and what we do know is Sam and Bucky have the shield at a certain point. So I've got a feeling that Sam and Bucky, whether the government endorses John Walker still after this or not, let's sweep that aside. I think Sam and Bucky are gonna obviously wanna take the shield off him now. So while Sam wasn't about taking the shield off him before, because look at what happened last time to him and Sharon and Steve and whatnot, and Bucky was all about taking it, I think Sam will be like, okay, I'm not letting him have that shield one more second, so they probably try and take it. I'm gonna be interested, very interested to see how Walker kind of reacts from this moment onwards. Is the serum gonna kind of make him think what he did was justified? Is he gonna be kind of in denial about it, but you see the cracks of where he does feel quite guilty about his actions? There's a lot to be explored here, and I can't wait to see what happens. I hope that the government just don't take the shield from John Walker and just, hey, Sam, you may as well have it. That would be kind of a boring way to go. I want I want him to be full on US agent. He's got the serum now. I want him to kind of carry on the path he's going, which is kind of dodgy to say, but it is obviously in tune with the character. But I really like the way Wyatt Russell depicts the humanizing aspects of this guy. We still find very annoying, but as I keep kind of bigging up in this review, it's kind of layers to him. What we have to think about now is, yes, we've got quite a lot to conclude in two episodes. Flag Smasher stuff, multiple super soldiers running around. That's problematic. What are you gonna do there? Carly's still in the wind. We've got the Power Broker. Still hasn't been revealed, going to be revealed. Blah, 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 blah. Sharon, what the heck's going on with her? Is Are they gonna reveal how she's got so connected? And then lastly, obviously John Walker himself enhanced through the new super soldier serum. That's, that's a lot to juggle, and I can't wait to see how they're gonna resolve it. Like, I, this was a truly thrilling episode of Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and I would just love to know what you thought of it down in the comments below. I would love to know what you thought about my theories. How can you expand upon that? Where do you think things are gonna go with the characters that I mentioned? I read every single comment, so definitely leave one. Sometimes I do this just to see how many of you got this far in the video, and if you've enjoyed it, so leave down in the comments if you're gonna leave a comment anyway, but also if you just wanna leave this, hashtag, the new cap is crap. I, I don't know, I say these things at the top of my head, but you know, if you do that, you're one of the real ones. Thank you very much. And if you've got this far as well, hit like on the video, subscribe for more conversations, discussions, reviews, and breakdowns just like this. I do have links to my social media and Discord server and other links that you may be interested in in the top pin comment. But other than that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day, and I'll see you people of the Marvel Cinematic Universe in the next video. Goodbye.